Fabrizio Federico is the most dangerous filmmaker in the UK right now. Do you, you want to do it tonight? He works without script. He edits on acid. He scours the streets looking for characters to be in his films. My mate is just robbing a boat up the road if you want to come for a ride with it. <laughs> he shuns narrative. He shuns conventions. He despises the film industry and for good reason. Yet having said all that, Loon is probably his most accessible film. <laughs> Charlie Sheen is a mentally disturbed 16 year old obsessed with the drummer Keith Moon. He suffers from several mental disturbances that are never fully explained to us because this is a film that respects us. It respects us to observe that and make up our own minds about him. He lives with his Jesus obsessed mother and her twin sister who seem to just hang around the house talking about Jesus all the time. And he's in a, a, a very strange, semi-incestuous relationship with his cousin. Oh, give me a drag. Oh, George, you want some of our cigarette? Give me a drag. What are you doing? So there's, there's been a trend in recent times with how we deal with mental illness in film, which I don't think is productive at all, because you see it everywhere. If you put into Google, any sort of mental illness, you will just get pages and pages of films raising awareness for that. And that is how they that is how they title their films as well. It's not a film about a person, it's a film about a symptom. And I don't think that is a healthy way for us to engage with mental illness or art. It should that these stories should be coming from a personal perspective. They should be coming from characters, not symptoms. Like the films of Ken Lurch that I'm always moaning about, those are films about issues, they're not films about people. When that, when that takes the front stage, then you can't actually get to what is. What is the thing that makes this that makes these problems happen? What is it that allows them to flourish? You can't t just talk about the symptoms, you have to look at it like that. And that's what this film allows you to do that. It doesn't tell you to think this way, it doesn't tell you to that think that way. It doesn't have an agenda in that sort of way. It's someone who found a story and they wanted to tell it. And again, like I've mentioned before, the thing was with it, I don't know how how much of this is true because often it comes it definitely comes across like a documentary. So I know from talking to this director that he does walk around Derby, just looking for interesting people and asking them about their lives and showing an interest in their lives, so he can he can take those stories and tell them somewhere else, and that that is the big difference between what he's done here and what is being done with mental health is that his stories are coming from people, and his stories are allowing you well by doing that by sort of giving us this fly on the wall view we we see every aspect of that and we we judge every aspect of that rightly or wrongly. That is what that is what a good film should do. That is what good art should do. It should make you engage with it rather than telling you this is what this is doing. Because when you do that, all you get is people who want to watch that because they already agree. They've already made their agreement. If, you, if you're going to make a film about refugees, people go, the only people that are going to go watch it are people who say, I don't think the government's doing enough for refugees. They'll do that. But if you go into a film that challenges you more, you might come out of it with something more, and you will experience more, and you'll see more of you'll see a more rounded, like possibly real character in this case. And that's what that is what I really liked about this film. But it also kind of reminded me of this sport in life, and this is why I said it's his, his most accessible film is because it, it reminds me of some of those the um, early angry angry young man films. It has that that element to it, the rebel without a cause thing that this. This boy is very he's he's angry and he's he's sort of angry and petulant and awkward because he doesn't he, he hasn't had a chance to find himself because of his condition and because he hasn't had any support with it he's just sort of stuck in this weird bubble where he wants to be a drummer even though he has no visible talent so it's all those things that can can lead to frustration can lead to problems it is not properly engaging with things and not discussing things. In, in, in the way that we're told to, like, you can only discuss it in that sort of way. You can't discuss the whole thing. Because, like, a lot of people would watch this film and just say, oh, that's a negative film about mental illness because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you what to think. It just shows you and it allows you and it respects you to do that. Because these things are complex as is life and they can't be sorted by splitting them into binaries, saying good, evil, sick, well... You can't just you can't reduce things down to that and then expect to get something more out of them. You have to look at everything. You have to look at the whole picture. And you have to take it all in and engage with it. And then you will only then will you even start to think about it properly. Never mind just you don't come out of there with answers because it's not that simple. But you if you watch a film like this that dares to go places that other people won't go, 
you are going to come out of it with something that you wouldn't have otherwise. Something that the mainstream won't give you because they have to sandwich everything and make it simple and make it bite size and have you come out think, feeling like you've done something when you haven't really. You've just you press play on the DVD. So that's, that's my views on Loon and the, the topics explored in it. As usual, the link will be down there and don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we'll be back next week with another review on realism. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm.